Y254 Imagine Welcome to the Power Talk Show with me, Dominic. It's another one. It's nice to have you here. And I've got my team from Nibs. Mkwapi? Aye, 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 aye. Nibs, Mkwapi? All right. So, and Masanga is here. Thank God he, he, didn't, he refused to go the other side. We thank God for that. He, he was really stubborn. Uh, thank you, Masanga, and welcome. I've got uh, Eugene and Koi who are going to be performing for us. And also, we've got Enoch. He's going to be playing the piano for us. So, welcome. Uh, two things, you know, that shook me over the last one week. Nyama ya supermarket usikule. I think that's one thing. I think that has come very clear. And, and it's a little sad on the other side because I think we live in a world where profits come before people. And I hope we, we the young people, are willing to kind of reorient or change the world in a way that benefits and welcomes all people uh, in such a way that people come before profit and business do not exploit people. That was just uh, horrible that that happens even though we know there are many businesses uh, even other than the supermarkets are willing to take advantage of the people. Something that happened here, remember two shows ago we had a lady called Anastasia who was suffering from cancer and I want to read a text from her husband Ibrahim who said to the family of Y254 TV and the viewers who sent their contribution I thank you generously uh, for your generosity. Anastasia is okay and uh, she is in Kenyatta. Uh, we've got some pictures. I don't know if they, uh, we can have them on the screen. And she is in Kenyatta Hospital Ward C, 8th floor, receiving her chemotherapy. And this, was, this is amazing. You viewers, you sent 30,000 shillings. That is wonderful. Please give, the, give yourself a round of applause, you know. <laughs> From this show, we got 30,000 shillings. And uh, Ibrahim, the husband, tells me we used uh, that to buy chemo drugs for a clinic and to pay the NHIF card and one for one full year and some money to pay for blood test and consultation fee for the doctors at the hospital. So amazing. Thank you so much. And we continue to wish Anastasia a quick uh, recovery as she continues to struggle with colon cancer and also to continue to say kudos to her husband who has uh, supported her for the last three years that she has been suffering from cancer. And now we're going to take a short break uh, so that we can also hear now from Koi and Eugene. So let's go. Nita pa 
talking about people living with disability and uh, our topic for today is everybody matters everybody matters and that's the conversation that we are having today and my guest is Betty Brenda Kiema and she uh, she lives with disability polio and she'll be telling us how she got it so what I want you to do is to go to our social media handles Facebook at Y254 channel and Instagram and Twitter but mainly Facebook there is a post there about today's show and I want you to comment there your suggestion, your opinion, or even a question to Brenda and uh, the, any, if you have ever gone through a challenge because of disability or a friend, please go there to our Facebook page and comment and tell me your story and I'll be reading out your comments and giving out your shout out. So uh, we're going to take a, again a, a small little break and when we come back we're going to start the interview right away. So as I have mentioned to you, go to our Facebook page at Y254 channel and, uh, and comment there. I want also to mention the number of Anastasia, anyone who wishes to continue supporting her. Uh, as I said, she's at Kenyatta Hospital suffering due to cancer. And if there is anyone who wants to uh, support her, uh, the number is 0715-312-612. Uh, she still needs our help. Remember, she says she uses 50000 a month for her medical care to for her to continue surviving cancer so we really need to continue supporting her so uh, 0715 is her number all right so uh do we have do we have something to yes now we're gonna go back to koi so who is going to give us another item before now we get into our discussion koi <laughs> Koi, can I talk to you for a minute, Koi? Yes, yes. Uh, do you, today we're talking about everybody matters. Mm -hmm. Do you have an experience with disability yourself, family, or anybody? Well, not really, not but I really. um, have friends mm -hmm. who gone through that, mm -hmm. and they've come up really strong. Are you, yes. did you write a song, are you writing, the two songs you've sung so far is like motivational, yes. right? Uh, what did you write this song in mind with? They actually covers, uh -huh. not my ah, songs. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, so I just drew inspiration from them. From them. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, you didn't select, you, but you selected them purposely for today. 
Kind of, yes. Kind of, yeah? Yes. They're fishing in Soal. Yes, they Welcome are. to the show. Thank you so much. Perfect. So, ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned to you, today we're talking about Everybody Matters, and I want to go straight to my conversation. So, Brenda Betty Kiema, you are a mother, yes. a university lecturer, yes. and a disability advocate. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you tell very us, much. Tell us, tell us, maybe there's something I have missed. Well... You have not missed anything, I think. Uh, Th that pretty much covers it? That pretty, uh, pretty much covers it. Uh -huh. And, uh, well, he said my name is Brenda, mm -hmm. Betty Kiema. He's calling me Betty, Brenda, Kiema. He's just mixing them. Is, is uh, Brandy better? Uh, Betty? Uh, Brenda, Betty, Kiema. Oh, Betty bought bitter butter. <laughs> <Yes>. you, know, <laughs> <laughs> you know that pun? Betty bought bitter butter, but the butter yes. Betty bought was bitter. Med so Betty bought better Betty butter. Better. Ah, my yes. goodness. All right, so tell us your story. My story, mm -hmm. that means my life story. You, your, your life story in short, how you came to have uh, to live with the physical disability. Maybe people cannot see as you're seated, but yeah. Yes, one on. Uh, <laughs> well, I was born in the village, a small village in Kitui. And uh, at a very early age, Around three years, I contracted polio. But I didn't know about it. You can only know that you have disability when you start seeing that there are particular things you cannot do and people are sidelining you, maybe because you're walking slowly. And sometimes even they don't want to get involved with you. According to my mother, because it's my mother who told me the age when I became disabled. Mm -hmm. She said that uh, I was okay. I was walking like any other child. But then uh, all of a sudden, I, I became sick. I was admitted. And the family was confusing polio with an injection because I was given several injections because at the same time I had pneumonia. So they, they thought that the pneumonia is what has caused my myself not being able to walk but later uh, when the news were given to my parents that the child will not be able to walk things fell apart it was not easy because it's many years ago so you were three years old when you yes. learned that uh, you have polio yes and you said it, it, it came slowly it That's came slowly all right and uh, so when the pneumonia you got healed you realized that you could not walk as usual yes all right yes so now when you say everything started breaking apart do you mean emotionally uh now this was in the family because they were in denial like this cannot happen and then there was a lot of argument between my mom and my dad and my grandmother now the culture came in what did we do ah uh. Is, yeah. it, is it a bit of witchcraft? Is it a bit of sins of the parents or something, something like that? Something close to that. Uh -huh. And then uh, my daddy, <laughs> may he rest in peace, eh? Amen. he said, this is not from our family. It must be coming from you. Now that's my mom. Eh? And you have to take care of this. So, so this is your mom who has told dad like that or dad has told Dad mom? telling mom, uh -huh. this is not from our family. This must be from your family. So, and you can hear this conversation, of course. Wow, then uh, mom decided to, she just decided to be quiet about the whole thing, and she didn't comment much because you know, those days, eh, those are many years ago. You're not at all, okay, but uh, the man <laughs> had the final one, mm -hmm. so for her to argue means that she would have received some beatings. So she didn't argue much. But my grandmother was very influential. She kept on saying that this, this must be a curse and we are not going to harbor this one right here in this home. So it's either you live with your girl or you tell us what to do. That's your grandmother telling your mother? That's my grandmother. You, have an you, you either leave or, or either tell us? Either you leave or you, you tell us what to do. But you're not staying? No, 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 no. Wow. So how did you feel when you, you, first of all, now you, you've, you, you've been physically challenged because of the polio, yeah. and you're hearing conversations that basically are rejecting you now. Exactly. What was going through you? 
well, you see, most of it is my mother who was explaining to me. Mm -hmm. She decided to take me to a boarding school. So at early age, that three, four years, to go to a boarding school, it's, pretty it's not easy. Mm -hmm. But I was taken to a boarding school at that age so that I can be away from home. And then they sort out their issues when I'm away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. But so I was mm -hmm. taken to Portree's Primary School for the Physically Handicapped. Where is that? Mombasa. Mombasa. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, do, you, do you remember what you felt now knowing? Well, at that point, uh -huh. I was not really thinking that is a big problem until I went back home after class eight. And I remember very well because, of course, the standard eight person is a thinking person, sure. it's, it's someone who can reason, it's someone who can see what is really happening. Correct. Then uh, when I got home after I've done my KCP, I could see a bit of some tension at home. And I kept on asking my mother, is, is everything okay? And she's like, yeah, everything is fine. But for me, I knew things are not okay. Mm -hmm. Until now, I was called to go to a secondary school. I did very well. So I was going to a provincial school. And that time, there was no school fee. Yeah. There was no school fee that time? No school fee. There was a lot of struggles going yes. on. Yes. So now, you, thank God you've finished class eight and no much struggled with your with yes. emotional and psychological with your disability, now. Yes, right? yes, yes. Now you're in secondary uh. school. Uh, did, did, were you in a regular secondary school or did you go to... I was in a regular secondary school uh -huh. and I can count the many times I was in school because, because of this drama of we cannot educate this girl because this is a curse, you know, this is, this is something that we are not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And then there was pull and push between my mom and my dad and my grandmother, but mm -hmm. everything was coming from my grandma and my grandma was influencing my dad, mm -hmm. and then my dad was in between two women, that's the mother and the wife. Mm. So it, it, it happened that at one point I had to relocate. Go now live with my grandfather. Where was that? On the side of my mother, mm -hmm. yeah. Where is that? The same village, uh -huh. like three kilometers. Three kilometers away, yes. all right. Yeah. And so you, you are going through a lot of struggles because of something you could not control at all. Yes, and something I could not understand. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I tried to, to, to comprehend why is all this, what does my legs have to do with, who with you are. what I'm going through? Mm -hmm. Like I can give you a good example. In the year 1993, maybe some of you are not born. Yeah, majority of them, yes. Majority, yes. Yeah. <laughs> the family planned to go for a holiday, uh -huh. but I was not to go for that holiday. And the reason was, I'm walking slowly. I'm, I mean, I'm not fit for that. So I was now left with my grandmother. The one who says you're the a The one who is really advocating, I leave that family. And it was not easy. But somehow, I developed a hard skin, mm -hmm. and I decided, well, as long as they're not beating me, everything is okay. Everything is okay. Yeah. So during this, this part, uh, was, was there a moment that you went through and you started feeling like uh, the rejection that you are experiencing outside? Did you turn it now towards yourself and you start now wondering, why am I disabled? Uh, did, did you... Did you experience those moments or was it, was it more or less uh, okay for you? After Form 4, mm -hmm. I remember I used to cry a lot because I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't have friends. I was just in my own world. And funny enough, stress is bad because what I was doing, I wake up in the morning, I will take breakfast, and when I go back to bed, I will sleep and wake up at four. So maybe I've woken up at around seven, I take my breakfast, then I go back to bed and I'll wake up at four in the evening. Oh. And nobody was bothering to wake me up. Nobody was bothering to find out what is the problem. Mm -hmm. But my mother was a good lady, she is. And I can say also my brothers and sisters are good. They were also trying to understand what you're going through. What yeah. is all this? Mm. But with time, 
I had to decide to leave. You can make a decision to be happy, even in the midst of so many crises. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you decided to physically leave the, your, your family? No, no. To, to leave, as in... To separate yourself from the situation? Kuishi. Uh -huh. Or to leave? Yeah. Or just... Or to fight it out and just to leave you and let leave. That is it. Okay. You know, wow, that is... Yeah. How, how, but how, uh, did it take you a long time between this time where you are waking up and crying every day to say that the moment you say no, you look, you it, know what? It took almost 10 years. 10 years? Yes. 10 years of simply feeling yes. dejected and stressed. Yes, even contemplating death and many things. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Ten full years. Ten full years. And you, you're, you're saying you didn't have friends during this time. No. You mm -hmm. just withdrew from the basically from the society and into yeah. your own little world. Mm -hmm. So, what 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 happened at this after these ten years that you say you know what I'm done feeling sorry for myself. Okay, what happened? I decided to you know it's after form four, mm -hmm. and I knew I had something that many people didn't have. One my typing speed was too high because I started typing at a very early age. The so typewriter? Yes, typewriter. Ah. With the, that character. They, they, they don't know. These it's are computer okay. yeah, people. These are <laughs> so I decided to go look for a job. Ah. So I packed my three clothes, I remember very well, put them in a paper bag, green, and I left. I had 500 shillings. I left, not knowing where I was going. When did you end up to? <laughs> <laughs> I ended up in my auntie's place. And my auntie could not live with me for long. She also decided, um, Brenda, we cannot continue living here because it's expensive, it's this, it's that. Then uh, I requested her to use her phone. I called a pastor friend. I explained to him what I'm going through. And he said, Brenda, I will come to see you. So he came and gave me 1,000 shillings. And then I left to Nairobi. Where are you heading to Nairobi now? I don't know. I just came. Then uh, when I got to Nairobi, I ended up uh, in, in another auntie's place. Mm -hmm. I stayed in that house for less than two months. Then I met this lady. You know, when I discovered that the life that I want is this one, I decided to move in that direction. I'm looking for a job, and I'm a typist, a flat from four liver, no any other training. But I can type very fast. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I met a certain lady. Uh, in Nairobi, there are many opportunities. You can grow very fast. So this lady, I told her, you know, I can type. I'm looking for a job. She said, oh, I know somebody who is looking for someone who can type very fast. And uh, he wants to publish books. And so he introduced me to that person. Mm -hmm. And during the interview, we were quite a number. And as you have noticed, I don't have long nails. So we were timed for like one minute. They wanted to see how many words we can type. When I looked at the, what he had given us, it was a big joke. It's mm. just a paragraph. Mm. So I did it. And done. I was done. Yes. And, then you, and you got yourself a job. He said, you have it. Right, right to the spot. Immediately. Done. So and so and from here, I think that's where now your channel opened and you went to for yes. your degree. Yes. What did you pursue at the university? I did, uh, first of all, I started a diploma, diploma? Kenya Instrument Management. Uh -huh. I did human resource human management, resource. yes. Uh -huh. Then um, I proceeded to, to do my BA, Sustainable Human Development. Sustainable Human Development. Then I moved and did masters. Uh -huh in uh, social transformation social transformation and i'm still moving and you're still moving on yeah. yes you're, you're still moving on and that's amazing yes so uh, before we we go for a break now uh, okay. so that your son enoch you know how, how old is he by the 10 10 years now so that he can play some pieces of what he plays at school for us the, on the yes. piano yeah. uh, what what opportunities are there for people who are disabled that sometimes they don't know about and that you would like to tell them well, most of the people with disability, they lack information. If awareness is well done, especially in the village, mm -hmm. they will know the proper path to use. Could you give an example, maybe, of something? Because, uh -huh. one, uh -huh. all persons with disabilities who are in employment, 
they should be tax exempted. No tax? No tax. Wow, okay. The government has wavered that. And those who are working and they want to buy cars, they're duty exempted. Again? You can just bring your car, pick it and drive. Then the other thing, it, the most important thing is to get registered with the National Council. Because when you have that card, you have more benefits than any other person. Medical benefits? Not really medical benefits, uh -huh. but uh, like now the tax exemption comes through that card. Yeah. The duty exemption comes through that card. Uh -huh. And the law protects you. It's only that it has not been enforced, but it is there. It is there. It is there. Okay. Employment of people with disability, 5% organizations need to observe that. Even accessing education in the institutions of higher learning. It's also there. It's also there. Yeah. Wow. All right. And that's why the Commission of mm -hmm. University Education mm -hmm. is pushing for university to adhere to that. Perfect. Yes. We'll be coming back to that. I think uh, there are some opportunities I also didn't know that people with disabilities have. And right now, we have two Enochs at the keyboard. One is Enoch Masanga, and the second, the small one is Enoch Kiema. And Enoch Kimeo. Kiema... Kimeu, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Enoch Kimeu, I'm sorry. Yeah? Enoch Kimeu is the son to... Uh, now Kiema. Huh? So Kimeu is the son of Kiema, Brenda Betty Kiema or Betty yes. Brenda Kiema. Yes. I don't know which one still counts for us. I'm still confusing on that one. Yes. So I think Enoch is uh, ready. So Enoch, whenever you're ready, go for it. Let's hear what you've got. Okay. All right, all right. Sorry. Sorry, uh, I'm going to cut Enoch for a little bit because I'm told we, are, we have some technical issues. So let's uh, solve them. Ba we solve those technical issues and then you're going to be back in a moment. Don't go away. Y254, imagine. 